Hey everybody, what's up? Circus here, coming at you with another Rogue Deck video. I know you guys love these, so Ryan, I thought we'd come back and give you Volume 4, Episode 4. How you doing, Ryan? I'm great. Hello, YouTube. This is a, always a fun one for us, and people seem to like it a lot. So yeah, we'll get right into it. This has been a deck that's just been huge lately in tournaments. It's been making it on the power rankings, so we thought we should at least cover it a little bit. And that's Dragoonities. I gotta be honest, go. I sit and watch this deck and sometimes I'm just like, what is going on? It's like I summon a monster, I equip a monster, the monster gets summoned, it goes to the graveyard, mm -hmm. it comes back to the spell and trap zone, it comes back to the field zone. It's like, what's going on here? Yeah, so Dragoonity is really interesting. Um, they were somewhat playable before Kuz came out in the, the main box. He's the UR, uh, the level mm -hmm. 2 tuner there that you see. He's a really interesting card because he can act as the uh, the level 2 or the level 4, so he's very flexible uh, in what he can actually synchro out. So the deck itself can pretty much... The, the, the whole goal is to make Ascalon their big boss monster, 10-star synchro. Um, he can he can banish a Dragoonity from the graveyard, and then you banish um, a face-up monster. Uh, really, really strong. Not once per turn, so you can, as soon as he hits the board, you can basically clear all the monsters as long as they can be targeted. You know, it's not a Cassidus or something. And even then, he has a huge attack and huge defense, so he, he is incredibly annoying to take out. And if you manage to take him out, he specifically synchro summons, not just special summons, synchro summons from your deck. So that activates your Barsha effect, for example. So if they, they deal with your Ascalon and can't deal with the new monster, you bring out another Ascalon. Um, Kus is really cool because he, he, he becomes an equip, but he can summon himself as well. Uh, so, you know, when you have cards like Ducks, for example, he can bring him back from the graveyard, and then you bring him out and you synchro with him. Um, so you have, you have Ducks as, as, as not a starter, but kind of a, you, you draw him late game and finish. Um, the Sage dude, I forget his name all the time, uh, the four-star guy he's he's your starter you want to get three of him um you can even normal summon coos and then uh send it to the graveyard to bring out the yellow dragon the six star one all those lead to ascalon all roads lead to ascalon <laughs> the deck right here but why do we um, got to make it so complicated can't we just have a level four tuner that special summons a level six from your hand and we're done <laughs> no this is how it has to be circus this okay. is how it has to be um and then yeah the rest of the deck basically just comes down to uh you know back row control cosmics true nades um the equip the lance equip card is really cool because um it'll make your monster immune to trap cards so that's pretty neat um but for most of the time it also gives you attack based on your monster's level uh, which is what you need to otk with this deck um why this deck is still kind of rogue is <laughs> it's kind of hard to otk with it so while all roads lead to ascalon some you are usually barely OTKing people. Usually your board is going to end up being Ascalon plus another Coos, um, and then and then you get like it's it's forty three hundred damage. So you need both monsters to swing to get lethal. And even and sometimes you can even make double Ascalon, but even then you still need both monsters to connect to actually you know obtain lethal. Um, <laughs> so if one sphere Karibo, and then your entire strategy falls apart and you get OTKed back. Um, it's not exactly a fun time to go from there. Um, and then, of course, disruption, you know, with all, yeah, with all synchro say. decks. If you get hit flood, with a floodgate and you don't have your true nade, and if you don't have your cosmic cyclone, it can be a bad time to actually get to your Ascalon to begin with. Because we've seen that quite a bit in tournaments that yeah. when they don't have the hey true nade, it just it doesn't work out for them as well as they'd hoped. Mm -hmm. And it's usually in the top 32 uh, when that happens. <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly, though, they have a great Crystron and Ritual Beast matchup. Because you don't destroy them, <laughs> you just banish them. Right. So Get them they out can't of really do much, you know. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I have my Citri. I don't, I don't care. I synchro with my Citri. S still don't care. Get the hell out of here. Well, I have wind <laughs> on the board. Okay, sure. Get the hell out of here. You know. Right. So it's a cool deck. Um, it's kind of, it kind of has that kind of one play. You know, it's Ascalon, Ascalon, Ascalon. Um, there is the other uh, level six, the um. The bulge guy, the gay bulge, we call him. I don't know how yeah. to pronounce his name properly. It's um, Guy Bulge. Guy Bulge, whatever <laughs> it is, man. Jesus, uh, you know he is. You know he he can be kind of like another play that you have because you banish mm -hmm. a wing beast. But I mean, there's really there's there's not that many wing beasts in this deck. It's mostly dragons. So but I wish you could banish the dragons and boost them. But he's just kind of like a secondary um, OTK machine. It's mostly just Ascalon the deck, um, getting your big boss out. Uh, having him destroy your opponent, great stuff from from them. And its major win condition against witchcrafters we learned was 
Time limit loss. <laughs> yeah, time limit loss. I think they're starting to uh, main deck Chalice more for Witchcrafter. Because um, this deck just needs one turn. One turn where you don't have Sphere Kariba, where you don't have your back row. They will eat you alive. There's nothing you can do. I, I, several times on the ladder, I have gone first. Dragoonity's turn. Hey, True Nade! Summon, <laughs> summon any of the Dragoonities. And you're like, well, I'm dead. Yeah, it's <laughs> There's over. nothing I can do. I don't have Sphere Kariba. I'm just going to get out of here. Yep. Time to go home. Yeah. All right, moving on. This is another one. Uh, it's out of the new box. A lot of people thought it was going to be hot. It's, uh, it fizzled really quick. We've only seen it a few times uh, outside the first couple of weeks here, maybe a couple times in the top 32. Uh, and that's Evil Eye. It's just... Yeah. Uh, oh, I just... I can't even... I don't even know <laughs> what to say. It's got yeah. a lot of great stuff, but it's got such huge weaknesses, right? That back yeah, row is just... It's yeah back row is really powerful right now um of course you know uh, it, making your monsters untargetable and not being able to destroy is really cool um but with things like cosmic cyclone being uh, you know available right. in the meta it's it's kind of tough to really do much for this deck um you know and then obviously they're um they can have some breaking issues obviously with their field spell and 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 the snake it's it's you shouldn't be bricking but if you do brick with this deck it feels impossible to get right. out of uh, that being said one of the best trap cards in the game holy crap evil eye defeat really really strong um and then pretty much the only current um deck that's kind of being played right now that can cause a draw um we actually had it happen in the last battle phase uh they ended up having to play four games because they drew on their third game <laughs> so. it's hilarious to watch isn't it <laughs> yeah. it's yeah, like you, it's... Get, you have to know what's happening here you have yeah, to know what's happening yeah when you get a purgatrio and an evil eye, and they're facing each other. It's just like, oh god, just make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't know, man. The, the, the Purgatrio can't destroy any of the monsters, so only the Purgatrio can swing. And you can only swing once into this monster because it's the only monster they have, because they only usually play one to two monsters, and that's it. They don't really play a third monster. Right. So that means if there's only one swing per turn, it's just constantly gonna the damage is just gonna keep constantly spreading between players and they're going to draw <laughs> right like it's just what it comes down to it's really funny to watch um other than that i mean it's 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 a great graveyard control deck um you know it, you, if, for example if you, if you are playing against an an invoke deck you know banishing the alistair from the grave when they go do the invocation if it's not on mm -hmm. the field or the hand um you know can fizzle the invocation obviously crystrons they're going to go ahead and they're going to they have to target what they're going to summon with the citri you can just go ahead and banish it before it comes out on the field citri can't activate um so there's a lot of technical play that comes with it um but it's, it's at a, a cool cost concept. right because you're you put yourself almost on a timer you your your life you points do. become yeah. your resource and then mm -hmm. you get down to 500 life points and you can kill yourself you can and that's why people are playing right um you know the the life point boost that's why sometimes people have to use the evil eye defeat on their own monsters so they don't take the burn damage right um so you know you do see some funky plays coming out of the deck sometimes but it's you know um it, it is still missing a couple of cards um and you know it's it's officially not in the power ranking it's not in the dlm tier list it's not even high potential anymore so um, you know, it's definitely rogue status as of right now. Uh, it still gets top 32s here and there, uh, but top 32, top 16 seems to be where it's stopping as of now. Um, and I think just until while we're in the heavy back row meta, I, I don't really see it going any further. Um, but hey, it's got great graveyard control, so maybe. Who knows? Oh, no, their back row is just too vulnerable, like you said, to cosmic or even straight flush. I mean, someone's just, you <laughs> yeah, know, playing straight, straight flush. Um, yeah. It's great, yeah, because you can make your monsters indestructible. Yeah. You know, I mean, and all these things. The, but then the back row, you could do it, you, your opponent can do whatever they want to it. Yeah. Getting it, getting your back row destroyed is preferable to it getting banished because you can bring it back when it's destroyed. Right. Um, funny enough, this deck is probably the closest deck to noble knights <laughs> it's like that's why it's on the list i knew there was something up <laughs> like when mythyard was explaining how this deck worked to me i was like okay so you're normal summoning a monster equipping it and if that equip goes to the grave you can re-equip it later I'm, I'm like holy shit this is actually noble knights <laughs> um so we were so we were like we like we just looked at it for a second we we're like oh my god what is this uh and you lose to one floodgate so hey you know literally you it's amazing well um, isn't uh noble knights just a turbo evil eye 
because the, the equips come back so much <laughs> yeah. faster. Exactly. There you go. It's all part of the plan. Um, yeah, no, I you know, I, I want to see if they give any more support to this deck. People have kind of shown me support for the deck, and it is kind of pretty broken uh, with negates and stuff. So we'll see. Okay. We'll all right, yeah, I mean, if it can negate, like, a spell or anything, when you go to target that back or they could change the whole yeah. deck. Yeah, and then if, you, if we, you know, obviously it just sucks having to force draws. You never want to be in a position to force a draw. Um, especially your opponent, you know, if your opponent is in a losing position, um, they can just say, you know what, I'd rather draw than lose, so I'm going right. to swing it with Purgatrio. Yeah, so, it's, you know, those, those situations suck, but hey, Purgatrio's in the game, so what can you do? All right, okay, moving on. This is one that uh, won the last battle phase. Uh, everybody was surprised. It's God, how old is this thing now? At least six, seven months. The the current version of it, it came out with Triamids, and was it Ritual Beast? Was that all in one box? It came out uh, with Triamids for sure. I don't remember to be honest. That was might, a long. It while might ago. not be in the Ritual Beast box, but it was definitely with the Triamids. Magnets. Mm -hmm. Magnets. Super interesting <laughs> deck. Um, so Magnus is interesting because uh, they they had uh, up until now they've only had one beta, which has pretty much kept mm -hmm. the deck irrelevant. Um, you know there was a small little bit where Grass Magnus was really ridiculous and was heavily brought. I think it was actually tiered at, uh, in DLM, but it was heavily brought in Clan mm -hmm. Wars and Team Wars and stuff, and it was really really good. It was actually a really good deck, um, kind of in the same power level of how Yosinju was. It was really good, but no, it wasn't tiered, but it was still a good deck. Just no one really recognized right. it was a good deck. Um, so that's kind of where they were. And then finally we got the beta, but then, you know, it was just like, <laughs> well, the, the, you know, they got power crept, so what are you supposed to do? Um, so they've, they've had some interesting techs happen. Bring It was buffed when Seal Tomb was nerfed. Bring It was buffed um, so that when you lose a 1,000, you can return a random card from your hand and you draw uh, a Dark Warrior. So the only one they play is Plasma. Plasma is amazing against heavy effects. So like Witchcrafters, their whole play is Summon Veer and negate people, and boost. Okay, well, you take away Veer. She can never activate ever again in her life. They're now what does the deck do? Yeah. <laughs> that's it. They, 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 you know, we saw that in uh, Battle Phase Monday. We did, we did. Um, and then another cool thing, the field the field spell is so, 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 so good. Um, if any of the magnets battle with an, a monster, and that monster is still on the board, even if the magnet dies, it gets returned to the hand. So Cassitis returns to the extra deck. Winda you're not summoning anything back to the hand, you know, and, and then you start out resourcing yeah. uh, your opponent at that point if they don't have Elder or something. So it's actually a really interesting deck because a lot of what it can do um, can kind of disrupt what's currently being played in the meta. A lot of Witchcrafters, you know, it being the new deck, people want to see what it can do. So if there's a lot of Witchcrafters, a lot of Ritual Beast, you know, the, the cheap one of the cheaper decks to get into the meta... Um, you know, yeah, I could, I could see this deck doing very well. Obviously, it's going to struggle against things like Blackwing and other heavy OTK decks if they don't have um, any any deck that can play Necro Valley, basically, right? So Blackwings can search Necro Valley. Favorite hero Neos can bring out Necro Valley. Yeah. They're going to have a hard time at that point. And then any deck that's playing Seal Tomb, Dark Magician, anything like that, they're going to have a hard time against that as well. I was going to say, um, usually they get one or two monsters on the board, then they start switching them out, they're putting stuff in the grave. Yeah. It's like, oh, I see, this is just a snowball at this point going downhill. Pretty much, yeah. You know. And if you if you cut off the access to the graveyard, that snowball, like, you know, it's, it's all of a sudden melts. summer. <laughs> yeah, it's just, what are you going to do? You know, like, yeah. you can't do anything. But once they get it going, it's just like, oh, this is not going to happen. Oh, yeah, when the deck gets going, it's insane. And this is one of those decks where you got to keep your eye on it, because when XCs come rolling around, this deck can swarm the board with monsters, and that's what XCs wants to do. You want to swarm the board with similar levels of monsters. So you see all these three-star <laughs> monsters on the board? Holy moly. Right. It's going to be interesting. So I think this is going to be one of the one of the decks to watch during that all era right. of Duel Links. We'll clip that, and we'll play it back in a few months here. <laughs> yeah, they released no good three-stars. It's all, like, rank fives and right. or, uh, rank fours and stuff. Yeah. All right, next deck is one that I just hate with a passion, and mainly it's because when it came out, I was playing Luna Lights, and I had to play a lot of games against it, and Luna Lights have a terrible matchup against this deck, and I, I just feel like it's a new player cheese ball deck. They, like, they went on Reddit, and someone on Reddit's like, dude, you know what you got to get? Super Heavy Samurai. No one can beat that deck, man, I'm telling you. This is yeah. just one of those decks. It's like, just tell me what you want to go into, and I agree that you can get there. Okay, 
you want to get into your seven i agree let's just let's just skip to the that part okay yeah so for anyone that watches my streams or ever hears me commentate whenever super heavy comes around i also hate this deck with a passion um, <laughs> mostly because I, I i refer to it as the noob trap deck right um people play it and they're like oh my god this deck is so good and they and you kind of you use it as a crutch because you don't really learn how to play Yu-Gi-Oh correctly you just learn how to play super heavy samurai and cheese people um to right. wins obviously it's a deck that relies on not using spells or traps um and using all the monsters there are a lot of super heavy monsters i think someone was telling me in the tcg there's like so like one of the one of the highest number cards of like archetype specific cards is super heavy samurais and that is insane when you really think about that right. i hope Holy that crap. none of them come to the game <laughs> i mean actually it would probably be nicer if some came to the game because then it wouldn't be just this one trick you know pony right. kind of a deck uh well it was super heavy samurai they 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 surprise otku right you, they they are they're playing things like kiteroid and stuff like that because they're not spells and they have the space to play them nothing they have nothing limited um or like they'll set a monster or they'll set like a giga gloves or something and you oh, can't I really do that. anything against yeah. giga gloves. yeah like if you swing you're just gonna have a zero attack monster that's not gonna do anything for yep. you so they're very good at deterring um themselves from getting otk'd and then they put you and the, you know their whole kind of strategy revolves around there, there's a lot of things the deck can do but what the deck normally does is they go into the stealth ninja which is one of the best super heavy samurais by the way uh sometimes even i don't think chris Rons are currently playing it but there was a point where they were um just because of how good it is it just summons itself during the standby phase and stuff but super heavy specifically, um, their whole thing is they just wanna they wanna synchro on up to the to that monster. They wanna use um, the green shield that doubles their or adds like fifteen hundred attack or whatever. The pickle, um, and then, yeah, we call yeah, it the pickle. pickle. <laughs> Activate the stealth ninja so we can attack direct, and then equip the one that can swing twice. You can't sphere Karibo them because they're already in defense, so you're gonna need you know like a kiteroid or something like that to block them, or like a good trap uh, to stop them as well. And of course, they have the flute, which can negate. Um, negate you know them being targeted so that's really really good to protect them the problem and why i call it a, a, a noob trap <laughs> right is you don't really learn proper Yu Gi Oh. so a lot of people um when super heavy kind of or when dark magician became popular was blowing up like crazy um you know there's always that one guy in the comments is like okay but they can't be super heavy samurai so we're, we're good you know it's like and then i was like <laughs> and i was like oh, and I, I like i remember having an argument with someone i was like how on earth <laughs> does super heavy samurai beat dark magician and they're like well if i have flute out he can't target me with the circle and i'm like okay so imagine this they activate circle immediately activate the rod that's in their graveyard to tribute and chain block you what do you do and they're like what's chain blocking <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like of course you don't know what chain blocking is you're playing super heavy samurai come on man um wait there's more to the game yeah so it's it's a really bad deck for new players to play i think it's a deck that you kind of play to cheese people to have fun which is not there's nothing wrong with that it's a really great deck for for ladder it's a really great deck for like the turbo duels if you just want to quickly farm people for stuff quickly get to king of games any otk decks amazing for getting to king games this one specifically because it can't get sphere kariboed is like the next step <laughs> you know you can't right. target it because you got flute and then you can't um sphere kariboed it. that's two great defenses uh, you know against common anti-otk you know responses so that, that that's kind of where you know super you, you don't you really don't see super heavy samurai in tournament play because the moment someone realizes they're playing against super heavy samurai, you just play slower. You have, you have side seal tomb. You do whatever. It, it, it's a pretty easy deck to counter when you know you're playing against it. Unlike black wings or cyber dragons, it's like I know I'm playing against you, but <laughs> does it really help me at all? Right. I'm probably still going to get otk because these decks have access to necro valley have access to non-targeting destruction and overflow um you know etc cetera, etc cetera, stuff like that where super heavy samurai is literally i've got this one play and if you have any answer to it i'm not you're not going to see me in the tournament uh recently i've been playing witchcrafters and i've been playing different versions i was playing a 30 card version ran into super heavy samurai on the ladder turns out you can just plunk down a veer and then just keep throwing out your negate every turn. <laughs> yeah, they and can't, they can't, swing at they can't attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's um And I did I decked that guy out. I I, I had thirty cards. I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna make you square, I'm gonna make you burn. We're just gonna sit here, I'm gonna do this. It was a half hour. That guy to did clarify, not want to give up. If you guys like Super Heavy Samurai, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're a new player and the only deck you own is Super Heavy Samurai. Take this as a word of advice. Invest into another deck so you can actually start learning dual links because you're not going <laughs> to learn with super heavies 
You're going to rely on this crutch. You're going to rely on this OTK. And then when it doesn't work, you're going to be super lost and not know what to do. Yeah, you're not. What? There's more to the game? <laughs> but yeah, that, that was like the, the worst argument I ever had with someone that like where they just clearly did not know what they were talking about. And I was just like, OK, well, you know, I, I guess I can explain chain blocking to you if you'd like, but I don't know if you're going to listen to me. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. Moving along. Get this trash off the screen. No, <laughs> what the? <laughs> this is a deck that took everybody by surprise this past week oh, yeah. in, in Battle Phase. Was it Saturday? Was it Battle Phase EU, basically, I uh, believe? EU, yeah. It was EU. We held, held it on Saturday. Um, it was fun watching Rai call this because uh, I think you had, was it Ristar came on? And you were kind of trying to explain the deck to him as it was going along. You're like, oh, wait till he goes into his number eight. You're never going to believe what his number eight is. It was <laughs> it was just funny because I, I, th I think it was Ristar was just like, what's going on with this deck? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people were taken by surprise, me included. The first time I saw it, um, you know, I literally was just looking for a spicy deck. Saw it. No one said, oh, hey, check this out. It was literally I just saw it on the screen. And I was like, let's spectate this, you know, because we probably won't see it in the top 32. At the time, he had like two wins or something. So it wasn't like too crazy. I think he only lost one duel the entire the entire run in Swiss. And I think he lost the Chris Rons or something. And I think it's one of the most expensive decks in the game. Right oh, now. it is so expensive. Oh, my God. I was looking at the cost. Multiple URs for main boxes. Multiple URs all right. from the boxes all over the place. Um, so but no, it's here we are. Light, it, well, I we I haven't shown the deck yet. It's all still a mystery. But here we go. Oh. <laughs> it's gonna be Light Sworn Synchron. There you go. Jesus. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it, um, it, it was sick. It was it yeah. was fun to watch. <laughs> when we were watching it on screen, the guy he made the turbo or the nitro warrior, and I was like, I don't. And then he used a skill, and I was like, okay, I get it. It's it's a cheeky little play to use your skill. I get it. And then he tossed the hand trap and went up to like 7k and i lost my shit i was like this is unbelievable <laughs> this guy just got farmed live on stream <laughs> you know what like i would just leave the tournament i'd be like all right i'm done but then he continued he kept going and it kept happening um very interesting deck uh it is amazing when you go turn two it is awful when you go turn one it is okay. so bad when you go turn one when you think of the other otk decks in, in the meta blackwing um uh, uh, heroes, those two decks specifically, you know, if they go turn one, they can at least set something up so that they don't get killed and murdered. Uh, this deck cannot really do that. <laughs> if, it, <laughs> if it loses too many resources turn one, it's just out of juice by the time it it, um, it comes to the, be their turn again to try an OTK. Um, what's the level eight? Is it Battle Wasp or, or the something? The Battle Wasp. Oh <laughs> my god, it's crazy. Yeah, so he go. so the, the combos you go into the level seven junk archer i think it's called and that mo and that banishes a monster uh face down face up doesn't matter it'll just target and banish and then you get the um the glow up bulb from the grave for one more you go to the battle wasp the battle wasp can swing twice <laughs> and it's, well, it can it, just end a duel on its own right because it, if it, if you use a synchro monster to synchro summon the battle wasp it gets to attack mm -hmm. twice which is hilarious to watch yeah it's 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 a fun deck for sure and then of course the nitro warrior is really cool um can be used with Rush Warrior out of the hand. Um, and if he if there's two monsters and he swings into uh, uh, any of the monsters, as a matter of fact, if another one's in defense, it'll turn it into attack mode, and then you can swing again. Um, so that's super interesting, because um, if your opponent isn't aware, he, he could be setting himself up for OTK and not even realize it. Um, really, really cool deck. Obviously, it caught a lot of people off guard. When we, when we watched him again, he did t uh, top with it, I believe, um, but he didn't go far because he went first a whole bunch and just couldn't clutch it out afterwards. Um, but yeah, I want to say he rich... came back the next day on Sunday, and I did that one. I want to say he got knocked out in Swiss, but someone else was playing the deck in yeah, the top like 32. <laughs> yeah. you know, he, apparently he was playing it in uh, any time tournaments, though, with the okay. DLM any time tournaments. Um, and like a couple of people knew what the deck did, but not that many people. So there, it wasn't common enough for people to really have a strategy ready for it. Um, but of course, winning a <laughs> winning a battle phase and, every, and everyone sees your deck list, you know, now you go from maybe 10 people seeing it to, to two, 300 people right. seeing it. You know, a lot more people are going to prepare for it. Um, Important note, it, though, if you are a super heavy samurai player and you're looking for a new deck, this is not <laughs> the one. <laughs> it is super expensive, my guy. Oh, Lord, it is so expensive. Um, but yeah, I mean, you just play the Light's Horn engine, uh, yep. mill a bunch of cards. Uh, you can get Rush Warrior, can get your key cards back to your hand. Uh, the Quaybolt can 
revive if you have a tuner. Uh, and then R Raiden himself can be used as, as a tuner. He's actually useful uh, to bring stuff out, not just to make every. Uh, he can actually make other stuff, surprisingly enough. Um, really, really cool deck. I... It is kind of linear when it does. It doesn't really have. If the OTK doesn't go through, you're you're probably gonna lose. <laughs> right. It summons. Uh, it, it goes through its deck very quickly. It mills all of its cards really quickly, and it goes through the extra deck very quickly as well. And then it's just very one key at that point. But it's it's fun to watch. Yeah, I, like you said, it just took everybody by surprise. Uh, he had his day on Battlefield. He had his you. day. Yeah. You know. Yeah. All right. I think that's gonna wrap it up there i hope you guys enjoyed the video it's always a lot of fun to do these so if you liked it make sure to like comment subscribe twitch twitter and discord and don't forget gamer subs rye was having a good time with his gamer subs on battle That's phase monday that was a good time with everybody uh make sure to use the code below for 10 percent off it's great we love it and i'm sure you there will you too so we will see you next time in our next rogue deck video Bye, YouTube. Yeah.